All right, so in this one we're going to talk about something that you'll see quite often in different tutorials and videos or comment sections online, and that is, do you need to make everything out of quads when you're creating models? And the short answer is no. However, there are some benefits to learning how to model things with quads. Uh, so just a quick recap, a quad is four vertices and edges with a single face. Triangle, of course, being three, and then uh, an ingon will be five or more. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, you know, certainly you don't have to model everything with quads. Matter of fact, there's some pretty awesome add-ons that don't rely on it at, at all, such as box cutter. You can see we can draw all these ingon shapes here. Uh, not a big deal. Make whatever we want to make. Make it look cool. And then uh, we can extrude it out and just bevel it. So there's a lot of benefits to not working with quads as well. And you'll see this in a number of different tutorials where uh, the guys are modeling in this fashion. So they're using standard modeling practice with uh, booleans more or less. And uh, this is extremely efficient. It's fast and it works. And it it's, it's a lot of fun. However, uh, something you don't get out of this is that you don't get any kind of real edge flow. Uh, and so it can become a little bit problematic in some respects, but uh, in reality, if you know what you're doing, it, you can actually model this in quads relatively easy and kind of position things and move it around and uh, get everything to still be a quad mesh. So in this particular instance, I might just like inset this real quick. Uh, and uh, grid fill this. And so you can see grid fill, if, as long as you have an even amount of uh, vertices on the edges here, you can actually uh, fill it with quads, right? So that's cool. That means you can subdivide this, all right? And if everything's in quads, you're good to go. It's not a big problem here, okay? But uh, particularly when it comes to curved surfaces, you're going to want to focus on working with quads more uh, because when you start making something out of a plane or something like that, and you're trying to create a very organic kind of curvy smooth shape you're probably going to want to use a subdivision surface modifier and that is going to open you up to uh, sub D modeling and sub D modeling is actually a subset of T-spline modeling so it's similar to NURBS and it can become quite problematic to actually create these meshes if you don't know what you're doing and you haven't practiced it a good bit so a lot of people are off put by this modeling method because it is uh, a little bit more complicated and harder to control uh, your mesh, right? So, but it's a quad workflow usually, uh, but not entirely. You can also use triangles and ingons in a sub D mesh because at the end of the day, every mesh inside of a uh, blender here is going to be triangulated in most game engines and everything else, right? So, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it comes out looking right, it gets triangulated at the end of the day. However, uh, working with um, sub D, when you do use a triangle or an ingon, what ends up happening is the first time you apply a subdivision, everything turns to quads anyways. So just to prove this point, uh, let's go ahead and do something here a little bit more rational. Let's try to uh, do this. We'll pull this out. And maybe we'll combine this and this, right? And so now that there... It will turn off optimal display. We can see it subdivides like so. If we bump it down to one subdivision, uh, we can see clearly what's going on right here. This was, in edit mode, a triangle, and then it turns into this quad that is uh, stretched out like so. But it is quad, so keep that in mind. A lot of ingons will not do as well turning into quads, so just keep that in mind. Ingons tend to cause most of the problems with the sub D workflow. Uh, so why would you want to work with quads only, right? Like, what's the benefit of turning everything into quads um, when you don't necessarily have to? Well, uh, for a lot of hard surface shapes, it doesn't really matter because if you're going to go take those hard surface shapes into a game engine, not a big deal. Uh, what the benefit of sub D is, is that you can up the resolution, of course, at any time, which is nice. And then you might end up with some weird things like pinching effects and stuff like that. But um, you can certainly modify this mesh to get a very nice, smooth, curved surface, which also happens to create very nice normal maps if you were to bake it out. Um, however, uh, these ones over here are kind of finite in a manner, except there's other little ways you can go about making them look even better, such as using a bevel shader and make, baking out your normal map with a bevel shader. Uh, so there's a lot of back and forth between these two methods. You can end up with a, a variety of different um, techniques and tricks to get around limitations in them. 
one thing you can't get around though is the simple fact that um, you will not have as good of a um, of a edge flow. So in this example here, uh, I can easily see where my edge flow is leading to because it's all quads and it's prepped correctly, right? And uh, so I can tell where my mesh is going to go and how it's going to uh, behave. In this corner, for example, right now, uh, it might be a little hard to see, but it runs the flow out through this way and it runs it back up this way. Uh, I can, of course, change this direction entirely if I want, and it's not such a big deal. It takes time, though. It's not something that's just automatic and it's going to do itself, uh, but you might have to actually go through and try to figure out how to make that happen uh, and then adjust everything manually. So you're going to have a, to do what's called solving, and you're going to spend a little bit of time trying to get this kind of stuff right. So uh, in order to change that edge flow on this particular edge, you know, we're going to have to go through and bisect it or cut it up or do whatever we got to do, right? And um, so right here, this is now the edge flow I want, but I don't have a quad here. And so this is where it becomes a runaway train for a lot of people, and they don't really like it because now you have to figure out how you're going to solve these issues. Um, but in this particular case, it's not so bad. All right, so... Do you need to model everything in quads? No. Uh, does it really matter at the end of the day if you're going into a game engine? Most likely not. Uh, but if you're working with smoother, curvier objects, definitely want to consider working with all quads and subdivision workflow. Uh, however, um, it's not required. Okay, you don't have to necessarily do that. Um, you know, like photo scans, for example, you get the point clouds and convert them into geometry or whatever. A lot of times you can use weird tricks like triangulating the whole mesh and then doing decimations on it and all kinds of fun stuff like that as well. So you, when you think back to uh, sculpting and you're turning on dynamic topology, everything becomes triangulated anyways, then you might have to retop it later. Uh, but you can, certain mesh, you can actually use it as it's triangulated and just throw that into a game engine. Like it doesn't really matter. So, um, you know, it's going to be up to you to determine uh, when you need it and when you don't need it, right? Now, one thing I do want to mention, though, is if you're trying to set up a portfolio, you're trying to get into a game studio, you're going to want to show that you understand how to work with mesh and be very proficient at it and how to set up um, almost perfect wireframes for the models you're creating. Uh, they're going to look for things as if, such as like if it's all in quads, um, if you have pinching points or e poles or in poles in certain areas, and uh, things like that. So, and if you're just curious, real quick, uh, we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, we'll see here that uh, when I subdivide this and I collapse it, an in pole is going to look something like this, where it's three edges coming out of a single vertex. And then if we can find one, there it is. There's an e-pole, and that's going to be five edges or more coming out of a single vertex as well. Um, and that's going to dictate whether your mesh stretches in that area or it pinches. So in-poles pinch, e-poles stretch. And um, But all in all, uh, that's pretty much all i got to say about this topic. You're going to have to determine um, what you really need out of your model. Do you need the control of the edge flow? Do you need... Um, to show this to people that might be hiring you, you know, it, it really depends on what you're doing. Also, characters, deformating or deform, deformation and mesh, right? Mesh that is going to bend works better with quads, generally speaking. There's times you might toss in triangles here or there to help with pinching and stuff, but generally speaking, you're going to want to at least understand how to work in all quads. You might not always use it, um, but you're going to find that as you do this more and more, you'll work between the two different. Uh, kind of what people call like two different methods, right? Uh, in reality, it's just modeling at the end of the day. It's all modeling. And uh, you just have to determine what's going to work best for the objects you're creating. So uh, if you're working like at an indie studio, a real small studio, but you have thousands of objects to make, doing all of them in sub D may not be the most beneficial uh, practice there because you might be crunched for time. This takes longer usually than it does to uh, just knock out big ingon shapes and stuff with something like box cutter so anyways that's it for this video i just wanted to talk about it real quick because you know it's really easy to get confused with the amount of different videos out there that talk about this kind of stuff and they don't give you like the big picture of things and um so if you're a beginner i highly recommend learning to work with quads and controlling your edge flow but don't be afraid of not using it either in certain situations you're not going to need it
All right. So just keep that in mind. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.